This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbil Mac, a bit of planner, Camp Power, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? Today we're gonna do a range test of this Polestar 3 long range dual motor, but there are some slight problems. First of all, I charged the car overnight, and then when I picked up the car, or I went to the car this morning, it was at 98%. But that's not the worst part. Yeah, because actually I want to start with 100%. So it's strange that it starts with 98%. But uh, when we enter, I think the car is supposed to show 520 kilometers of range. It shows 420, so I thought, okay, maybe it's just been adjusted for some hammering because we, it's been doing 1,000 kilometer challenge. Okay, but when you could put the car in drive now, um, there is a notification here. Driving performance reduced, drive with caution. And yeah, turtle mode. Really? Or tortoise mode? Tortoise mode at 98%. That's new. Is something wrong here? Do we have driving performance reduced, huh? It doesn't show me anything. One serious issue. Why is it that the press cars I borrow tends to have problems? If we look at the power meter, uh, we should have close to full power, right? Uh, we have roughly half power, maybe even less. A coal battery, that, that's unlikely. It's been parked in the garage and it's 13 degrees outside. And then the garage is around 18 degrees Celsius. So with full, almost full battery, uh, you know, coal battery is, I mean, sorry, well, it, in these conditions, I mean, you know, almost full battery and warm-ish, then no problem. If it's minus 30 degrees, uh, 30 degrees outside, uh, then I can believe that that could happen. But still, when the battery is almost full, then even that would be unlikely. What's wrong with the car? Uh, is it the battery? Is it the motor? Uh, I don't know. All right, we're back in the garage, charging up. Hmm, so it is charging. Why didn't it uh, start with 100% this morning? Uh, well, that's also strange. We have a big-ass screen here showing some fancy charge animation, but it doesn't show you how fast you're charging. Here we can see some info about that. We're charging at 10 kilowatt. There's a three, that's three phase. Yeah. Um, okay, it'll take 10 minutes. Let's wait and see. Okay, we finished charging to 100%, all good, but there's another slight problem now. You see, we're now charging here, I'm sitting in the car, and then in the driveway, I saw a dude running over here, or yeah, walking over there, and I was wondering, huh, well, is that one of the guys who wants to sell something? Sometimes time we get that, but this time he was being a bit weird because uh, he came, approached me and I was like, excuse me, can I help you? Uh, you are on my property, you know? And he showed me a ring and he said that he's going to a wedding to deliver this ring. Uh, you know, it looked like it had freaking huge diamonds, even bigger diamonds than my wife has, right? So I'm like, that's fake. And then he asked me if he can borrow a car and he looked at the Tesla. I'm like, what the fuck, man? I'm gonna call the police. So I, I sh took a few photos of him as he left. Because I, I didn't tell him to leave. I just said, no, no, I don't have any. And then he just left, took off, and then he went to some other place around here. And then I called the police. I called a 02800, which is not the emergency for police. It's more like if someone is making noise here at night or something, you know? Like when I called the, doing Lucetine. And then they, they didn't pick up the phone. No, rang them a long time. So then I called the emergency, 112, yeah. Uh, and then they pick up the phone. And then I told about the situation and they said, okay, hmm, yeah. And then I said I had pictures and they, yeah, told me the email I could email, send it. So they had, okay, does there some good, uh, okay pictures show how, what he's dressed, how he's dressed, you know? Uh, also, I also described that it's a guy with a little bit of slight beard, uh, glasses, uh, in a 50, 40, 50 year old, yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, they didn't have any patrol car available right now. But they better get here ASAP. And they went inside and then left the garage door open. I was just going to talk to wifey a bit. And I told her about this and uh, 
And now I feel a bit unsafe. Then I have to come back and close the gate. I have, I have camera equipment and stuff in here, right? Uh, and also, wifey has the porch door open uh, because it's nice weather today. And she's home alone with a kid. So, dude, I thought I moved to a safe neighborhood. What the fuck is going on here, huh? And then why is the police not here yet? Okay, if he just happened to be from Nigeria and he has lots of wealth and he wants to share it, okay, okay, then it's fine. But, uh, and if he needs to go to that uh, wedding, if everything is true, then it's fine. But uh, the way he's sneaking around here, that looks a bit weird. Oh yeah, when I came out, I also met one of my neighbors. She was walking the dog and I asked her, hey, have you seen this guy? He's like, yes, I saw him. Yeah, walking around here. Uh, and then she said, it was a good thing that she locked the door. Yeah, you better lock the door. <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, I'm going to take a little sweep around the neighborhood before we go. But uh, we should proceed now with the test. So I'm going to measure the net capacity of this battery. Well, it shows here 111 kilowatt hour. According to EV database, we have 107 kilowatt hour net capacity. And at least when they did 1000 kilometer challenge, I calculated roughly that we have 105 kilowatt hour. So let's see if we get 105 today also. Wait, what the heck? Even at 100% we have the turtle mode. Driving for... Uh, and the, the, it doesn't say more here what's wrong. If you could say battery problem, drivetrain error, inverter problem, something more. It's just a serious issue. Well, I'm gonna return this car in two days, so... But if I can at least do the range test, uh, I'm not sure if the range is gonna, I mean, this area is gonna affect anything. Uh, th then I'll be happy, right? But also, uh, yeah, I mean, wh what could have caused this? I, I charged the car during the vehicle to load test, but that was just with a regular charging cable. That energy couldn't come from the plug or uh, outlet or uh, EcoFlow, it doesn't matter. But I actually didn't try that vehicle to load adapter on this car. I don't dare to try it. So this fall just happened by itself. Uh, we are on the motorway now and I see that, okay, this area here is unavailable. So that means we have roughly 50% power available. I mean, that's still a lot, you know, that's around 250 horsepower or uh, yeah, 180 kilowatt probably. But still, uh, as we drive now, will it get reduced further? Uh, is one motor kaput? That's why we have half power. That's likely, right? More likely now that there's a battery problem. But actually, I'm now not sure if I should proceed with the range test and the charging test. Uh, wait a minute. I've been driving a little bit north. We're getting close to uh, Ion Tidal now. But uh, I noticed that the power meter here, that if we apply power, it seems to drop a bit. Or the, the power limit drops even further. I think we have around 40% power now. But if I regen, you see, then the power limit goes up or... So that leads me to believe that maybe there's something problem with the battery. In that case, uh, I think I'll just top up at Ion Didal now, before I even attempt to go home. So the car could shut down, it could, the battery could die now if it's the battery fault. Okay, here we are. Dahl. Yeah. But um, see, Seems like the, the power limit was crawling down more and more, or we had more and more power limit. But now in the region, uh, yeah, that, that goes, then it goes up. Pretty sure of that. Oh, look at that. Now we have around 70% power. Okay, now that we are parked, yeah, now it's see more clearly. So it actually goes up and down. And based on this, now my best guess is that there's a battery problem, not a drivetrain problem. Okay, now we're charging. Uh, 400 kilometers away, huh? okay. Okay, it's 38 kilowatt at 95%. That's good. This should also indicate that uh, the battery is not cold. If it's cold, then we'll be getting 5 kilowatt. Okay, we charge the car to 100%. Uh, we still get the performance reduced, right? Uh, all right but then let's see if I switch view. You can see the... Oh, wait, um, here. Uh, still have that same power limit, more or less. Okay, let's uh, hope I can make it back home then. Whoa, this is really scary because now if I just try to accelerate a bit, look, the power limit crawls down. Wait, it's like it was worse than before. 
Oh, I even charged the car to 100%. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we have uphill coming. Ah, shit. Uh, come on, come on, come on. You don't die now. Wait, there's another car with a... We don't want to die together over here. All right. Well, that's correct. Stay behind the barrier when you stay. Uh, don't stay right by the road and hug each other, you know? Okay, but uh, okay, how is it going here at least? Um, it is drivable for now. Fortunately, we have plenty of chargers. In case I feel like I need to charge, I could top up even one more time. But we are just 15 kilometers from home, so we should be able to make it, right? 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 All right, we are back home. So that's good, at least we made it here safely. But when you look at the power limit now, it looks like we have less limit or more available power than when we left the Ionity. That is also really weird behavior. So, um, yeah. But uh, since I already have this car here, well, I'm supposed to deliver it uh, or return it back in two days, but I might deliver it tomorrow already. But you see, since we have it here, why don't we try something? We have this keep climate on and I noticed that it will actually run for more than just half an hour it will run it for several hours maybe until the battery is too low yeah what is too low then it doesn't say maybe 20% right wild guess so what if we just keep it running now and then we just crank up the volume high we go into HVAC settings here do we have more stuff here we can powerful okay and then the rear is also on. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah, I don't see here at least how many kilowatt we're pulling, but it should be significant. Maybe at least three to five kilowatt, right? So now we just want to let it pump. Oh yeah, another thing, we need to open the windows. And also to open the rear, you have to then use this just like the MEB cars. Now you switch to the rear. Wait, wrong, wrong, wrong direction. So this should help speed up things a bit. Yeah, to discharge it. And then I could also keep the garage door open so that, uh, well, we have 16 degrees so that it will drain faster because the, if the, the ambient temperature, which is around the car, right, is not too high, then the car needs to work harder on heating up the cabin however with that weirdo around here i don't know if he has disappeared or if he's still around then i don't want to leave anything open like this uh, okay well let's see then in a couple hours it's been several hours now we have discharged the polestar 3 so yeah this is the trick at least when i'm around i've been shooting a video with the model y I open up everything, open the garage door also and open the doors here you see that it's put on high so we're already down to 84% and the car hasn't died yet hmm. let's check out, can we drive now? I just noticed something uh, kind of weird not so ergonomic, which is that if you are here, when you want to change some settings for the HVAC you cannot change the temperature then you have to go here and here you can change temperature why is it not available here there's still some leftover space here in the big screen right okay but um let's just go around 17 degrees Celsius. if we go too low then not sure okay whatever so 84 percent buckle up and then turn on the gear all right let's see Okay, there's still turtle mode, right? All right, so we just have to press here to get rid of the, the thing. And I don't know why, passenger airbag on needs to be pressed twice before it goes away. Okay, let's see. Now I want to get it bigger. Well, that's the biggest we get, right? This is smaller, this is medium size. Yeah, this is, that's the biggest. Huh? It seems like you can't drive, everything just looks normal, and the power limit is still there, but it's actually not as bad as before. Uh, okay, but I don't feel like going on a range test or taking a trip to Yale with this, the, the way it is now. 
You see, this afternoon I have to go with whole family. I have to go grocery shopping. And then the idea to use the Polestar 3 that has some slight problem. Well, according to the car's display, critical error. Hell no! You know what happened last time when I went with the whole family before I returned the EC3? It got stuck. So I'm just going to push it back into the garage, charge it up to 100%, and then tomorrow we return the car. And then instead, I'll be using the Model Y from Bill Componente. I just happen to have it here as a coincidence because I've been testing some equipment for the Model Y. So yeah, Tesla for the win. And then what the heck happened with the Polestar 3? It's why I also asked Vandermeid, have you diagnosed Polestar 3 before? He said, no, he diagnosed Polestar 2. I don't want him to open up the battery pack and you know, because it's a press car. But if he can just hook into the OBD port and try to figure out something, yeah. But the signals on the Polestar 2 and Polestar 3 are different, I believe. Uh, at least, you know, car scanner doesn't work, so yeah. But maybe I'll see. I'll see if I can go there tomorrow. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. But uh, at least for now, you see that we have yet another troublesome press car. All right. Anyway, I think that's going to be for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.